What's going on? What's going on? It's your man, Chris B, a.k.a. Buzz, back again with another video. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, now, uh, I've covered a, a few things, uh, mostly serious topics. You know what I'm saying? I like to think these are mostly serious topics I've covered. But this one today is a little on a lighter note. Just takes me back to the time that was probably the golden era of comedy, in my opinion. Now, uh, no offense to the comedy that's going on now and the young brothers that's doing it today. I just think at this time, in the age, in the 90s, that this comedy <laughs> that was out <laughs> was crazy. And, you know, I was really into comedy back then. And one of the pillars of comedy was Deaf Comedy Jam. Uh, Russell Simmons, Put it together. Martin Lawrence was one of the original hosts, and Kid Capri is the DJ. <laughs> they used to tear it up, man. You know, it was a crazy time, but it was uh, to me that was when comedy was really funny. You know what I'm saying? In my opinion, a lot of the comics that was out back then were very funny, and uh, it was just a great time. That vibe, that '90s vibe. Now we all know, you know, time, you can't get stuck in the past and times change, but I am very nostalgic about Def Comedy Jam. And it definitely uh, went on to create some huge stars in, in entertainment. So shout out to Russell Simmons, man. We used to call him Hustle Simmons. <laughs> I see why, man. But, uh, you know, that, that my personal opinion of Russell Simmons is something different, but what he created was uh, last for a lifetime, you know, with that deaf comedy jam. <laughs> you know, Marty Marr was, uh, you know, the original host. And, uh, man, there had never been another one like him. Martin was, uh, Lawrence was on top of the world at that time. You know, he was on his way. He was on the grind to becoming a big, huge movie star. But at this particular time, he was hosting a Def Comedy Jam and he used to kill it. You know, he could, he could host it, perform in it, <laughs> but he definitely set the other comics up that came up after him. He set them up for success by getting the crowd hype and getting the crowd laughing and ready for the time of the night. But I just remember them times as a very good time with comedy. Not to say that before that in the 80s, because I used to listen to uh, Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, Red Fox. See, like, long time ago, you couldn't even, they, you had to listen to their records. <laughs> That's crazy, Andy, you I'm old and dirt. You had to uh, listen to the records of Red Fox, especially Red Fox and Richard Pryor. You had to listen to their records, you know. And <laughs> I used to listen to them, them too, and they was a real funny man. And like I said, I think comedy didn't change, you know. I like Cat Williams, he funny too, you know what I'm saying? And he holding it out, he holding it down. And for the uh, for the newer comics, I like uh, DC Young Fly, I've watched a few of his things, he funny, you know what I'm saying? Country Wayne, he funny too, I like him too. But I just think the times was different back then, you know what I'm saying? You could probably get away with a lot more than what uh, they'll let you get away with now. And <laughs> I just think us as uh, fans of comedy back then were a lot, uh, lot tougher. You, When you went to a comedy show, you had thick skin. <laughs> you know, it wasn't all this I'm offended stuff. And in my opinion, I just think it's a, a wonderful time for comedy. Wonderful time for enjoying comedy. A wonderful time for laughs and jokes in the black community. I think we need that a lot these days. I think we need laughter. A lot of us don't laugh a lot, you know? And I think it's something that we need to do every day. It's healthy for your body, laughter. I didn't say you had to laugh all day and joke around and be a clown, <laughs> you know, but you should make laughter a part of your life. 
this definitely gives off that positive energy that we all need to soak in and vibe to. And I think uh, the political correctness of the day that messed up uh, a lot of the situations for us. Especially in comedy. You know, political correctness is infiltrated its way into every aspect of life to where they want you to be politically correct about everything. And I think it hurt comedy so bad to where, you know, comics didn't exactly know what to say. I think that was the problem uh, going into the future with comedy. Back in the 90s, you know, you, you could be raw with it, raw as you wanted to be. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Even for the uh, white people with Andrew Dice Clay and <laughs> Things like that. George Collins of the world. You know, even back then for them, comedy was different. You can say what you want to say. There's a few white dudes I like this, uh, uh, comedians. Um, I like the Gary Owens dude. He is, he is all right. He's funny. He damn sure. If anything, <laughs> brother, forget it, brother man, Kerr. Give him the, oh, <laughs> Get to do some courage or well, some credit for being courageous enough to get in and stand in a room full of black people and tell jokes. That that takes a lot of courage, you know, for real, for real, be a white dude. So I can definitely definitely give him a lot of credit for that. And uh who else? I guess late Larry the Cable guy. I used to like him too. <laughs> Look at there. But all in all. You know, for me personally, it's just a nostalgic time, going back in time to those days. And I just wanted to share a couple of videos with y'all just to give you a glimpse, especially you youngins, you youngins of the day, you young buck, young buckaroos. I need to check this out. Uncle Buzz telling you to check this out. Uncle Chris telling you to check this out. So we're gonna get into these videos. Oh, 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 oh. Boost your revenue and drive growth with Google Ads. Reach high value customers across Damn shame, he Epstein Island, Chris Tucker now. It's a damn shame, man. It's a damn shame what they'll do to you in uh in Hollywood, man, once you get there, once you get the success. But before that, he then on, on, when he was on the grind, Chris Tucker, funny motherfucker. Definitely funny motherfucker. <laughs> man now you know you can see why i used to laugh for hours man watching that deaf comedy man they used to be something else man i, I tuned in faithfully to watch the shows you know and damn sure i wish it was like netflix now and you could stream it uh back then where you could just binge watch but they couldn't produce the shows that fast so you had to watch them i guess every week so you just couldn't wait. That's like that's like torture, man. And, and high anticipation. You just waiting for the next uh, comedy thing to come out, man. But it was so crazy, so crazy, so crazy. But I have one, one more that I definitely wanted to show to y'all, man. <laughs> and I know for the, for my old heads, I know y'all remember remember this guy. You know, God, he used to bring the house. There. In the very first minute that he stepped on that stage, this guy brought brought the house down. And it's a damn shame, man. What happened to him? Definitely a shame. So I definitely would like to say rest in peace to Bernie Mac. One of the all-time greats. <laughs> He just make a look, make you laugh. <laughs> 
<laughs> he was funny as hell, man. Well, definitely won't be nobody like Bernie Mac, man. Rest in peace to me. That, that saying right there, I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. That's because it was known. When you came to New York City doing comedy, you better bring it. And especially when you was on that Apollo stage. If you was a, if you was a comedian on the Apollo stage, you better have it. Or you was going to get booed off that stage. Even Steve Harvey got booed off the Apollo stage. And he was hosted. <laughs> so every comedian knew if you brought it to New York, you had to bring your A game. And Bernie Mac did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, y'all, man. Oh, man. So you can imagine what I was going through back in the days, man. <laughs> Rest in peace, Bernie Mac. Sad to see him go away, man. He was just getting into his groove. But, you know, that comedy back then, to me, was very special. I think it was when comedy was very funny. I think it was the golden age of comedy. And the come of, coming of age for a lot of your favorite stars of today. When they was first getting their grind on. But, uh, <laughs> man, especially in New York, you had to bring it. I do remember that. <laughs> man, they used to uh, advertise for the Apollo Theater. <laughs> Come to the Apollo to hear the crowd boo. Because <laughs> they boo your ass off stage and the Sandman will come and get you. Shout out to the Sandman. They've do been doing that stuff long before I was born. <laughs> but if you could make it as a comedian on the Apollo stage, you could make it anywhere for, for him. And just in general back then, like New York, New York. If you make it there, you can make it anywhere. It really used to be true back then. If you could come to New York and rock the house, <laughs> you was on. And the real good comedians, they 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 wanted to do that. They wanted that smoke. <laughs> that was the thing. But it was just, it was real good going down memory lane with y'all. Just uh reminiscing about the time when comedy was real good, I right, in my opinion. Don't come after me, young folks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I like some of y'all too, but it was just hit different back then. And on that note, as always, like and subscribe to your boy Chris Barber. Get with me. We out. Uh, uh, hey, hey, hey. Oh. Uh.